Hey everybody, welcome to our live question and answer. We're here. Are we live? We are. And last yeah. time I checked Jimmy's pulse, there was a pulse. I think a little we bit, of, a little bit of light. One thirty-five, maybe. <laughs> oh no, going one... down. <laughs> but anyhow, we're here, um, and we're going to talk a little bit about this promise that we had, which cannot be delivered because the customer needs this sofa. Yeah. Uh, the way it was worded to me, it's like a big gap <clears throat> tooth. You know, lo losing a tooth in the in the dining area, in the kitchen area, or whatever. And what it was. was the actual words that he used? Oh, it wasn't. It was like that. But yeah, I, yeah. I just have this up here. I did have a little bit more information. I want to talk <coughs> a little bit about John B. Warner. And um, I th I'm not sure if this is more. I think this is more information. So. But this is it, Jimmy. There's no other information about this cabinet. Thank God. Like he's that. pretty exhausted the crap out of me already. But look at this, though. This beautiful. Once we remove this, they'll be able to see this beautiful sofa. So I just wanted to read this. The sofa probably made in shops of John B. Warner, 1806 to 1863, which I have here. Wallingford or Manchester, Vermont. Mahogany and, and mahogany veneer. Cherry maple pine. And this is new upholstery. This is the one they have in a museum, guys. And it looks almost exactly like the one we have here. So the dates, uh, everything about this is proper. Uh, the only thing is, there's not much more wor uh, th than that. Um, so I did want to talk a little bit about local. Before you do that, show everybody what's behind you. <laughs> oh, yeah. Jimmy, Jimmy and Kevin, myself, Patrick went out and got this. As, this is Jimmy's Christmas gift. Thank you, Jimmy, for so all So much for that done. big, big bonus I was going to get, right? <laughs> well, you don't know what's inside there. Oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so they're the mascots of the... But that's... Uh, that's yeah, that's, yeah, actually, you know what? This is our new introduction for the for the new year. When you do your you show, you can put these up and we can get some little furniture in front of us. And yeah, a little doll like, furniture. Yeah, act like we know what we're doing. Yeah. Well, actually, the dolls can act like they know you what they're doing. You can put those over there for now. Thanks, Patrick yeah. and Michaela, for that. But I wanted to talk about where I live in uh, Sudbury, Massachusetts. There used to be a local, one of these local guys, one of these local wood uh, carpentry cabinet maker, furniture maker. And the thing about them, so they would be, it would usually be done on a farm. They would have a shop on their farm. Right. So they're farming all day long, and at nighttime they're coming, uh, or early morning, whatever, they squeeze building furniture in. Usually Three or four hours a night. Yeah. Just another... So their hours. productivity, their, what they did, they didn't do a lot volume. They're not a lot of volume at all. In nope. the case of the Sudbury, I can't remember, I wish I remembered his name. But this furniture is very desired. Um, if you could find a piece uh, from, a, from a local history standpoint, like this piece back here, mm -hmm. from, uh, from, a Vermont, from a Vermont standpoint, a local standpoint, these are very important pieces. Okay. So they do have another one in the museum. So I just wanted to bring that up. Uh, there were a lot of these furniture makers uh, all over the country, really, that were, uh, they didn't have one, you know, big manufacturer. No. I mean, they were lucky <laughs> they had the equipment they did. Maybe over time, slowly, they built on there. And everything done by hand, Jimmy. They had treadles. They had treadles on their lathes. Everything was treadled. That, that was, a, yeah, a lot uh, of work, files, a lot of time. You know, yeah. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. it. And, you but, know, Imagine if they had the the equipment that that's out today for them. Oh, they they were so good at what they did. So so they would get commissioned only on a local level. It would be very rare for them, I think, outside of their little geographic area. Yeah, you'd have work. to. It's word of mouth definitely right. would have to. So be back the then, you, you could imagine their their output wasn't wasn't great. So finding mm. one piece is pretty cool. But they have two. We have a, a customer that owns this. And the, and the museum has the other one. As far as I know, that's it. And that's all the information we have on him. So, Jimmy, uh, why don't you catch us up on what you've been doing upholstery related. I understand you went out to a farm at night and collected some horse hair for us. Oh, did, yes, yes. How did that go? Uh, well, uh, I, somebody came out of the house and uh, flicked the light on a few times, had this <laughs> large, large weapon in their hands. I was just kind of like... Hmm, I don't think I belong here now. I think there was reach behind you and show people what you did. They take that out and Jimmy did come back with some beautiful horse hair. Oh this oh yeah. Look at that. Jimmy. Actually it looks like something out of a three stooges uh, <laughs> <laughs> That looks know? like a tube. Yeah, we could probably get like I don't know, what do they put it on? Like a leather skin. Actually, head it's got your color hair, man, that thing. Yeah, it's I got know. Your I, highlights. Yeah, well definitely this yeah, I actually I get my hair cut this week, but definitely this is not it. 
But anyhow, I was just kidding. Jimmy didn't do that. That comes from Paul, and that that's going. Most of it went into this sofa, and I'm going to describe, I, I tell you guys what I did, and then Jimmy's going to be working that on the arm. So uh, we're trying to make up for our, uh, our promise that we didn't deliver. Well, yeah, it it, it it definitely has lost a little bit of steam because now not everybody's going to see get to see what we do for every week. It's kind of jumped right. ahead. How many weeks is le actually left on this? Well, probably another we're not doing it. We're not. I'm doing it, so right. it's not. It's not done. It's done. So you'll probably be done in the next couple of weeks. Hopefully, yeah. yeah. But today we're going to try to get an arm on. You're going to hand do some hand picking on the horse hair and some stitching. I show people stitching. Mm -hmm. We may do a blanket stitch in areas. Um, okay, so. Yeah. Do you have any other any news to catch up on upholstery wise? No, or do no. You no I've been waiting. I've been waiting for a notification of the, uh, you know, 2024 upholstery world upholstery fair, but right. I haven't seen anything on that yet. So. And I did bail you out after you removed a sticker from one of those furniture. It says, "Do not remove the sticker." Yeah, yeah. They came down on me pretty quick. Um, I didn't even get out of the parking lot. So. I got you. Out. I got you. Out. <coughs> it's a small bail. Yeah. It was what? You can't do that anymore. Ten dollars and maybe a <laughs> Dunkin' Donuts gift card. <laughs> but anyhow, uh, so where does that leave us, though? To let people know where we're going from here, because we're not doing this one now. Well, you know, I think we still owe people a sofa, so I think we have to do you something. You know, and I think about a sofa. The way I look at a sofa, it's either or a love seat. A love seat's two times the chair. A sofa's three times. Well, a love the chair. seat though is is. I mean, there are some people out there with the love seat. I mean, I've seen them still on Facebook community, and I think it's once in a while you see them. Or again, like I've said too, yeah. an oversized single chair, which is kind of again another. I don't like those chair and a half. They call them chair and a half. I think. Well, somebody who like, who like you know who may like the idea of. You know, a reading type chair. It's oversized. It's big. It's cushy. It's. I think it reflects society and, and um, our calorically challenged uh, individuals like ourselves who need bigger places to sit. No. 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 I mean. So you do a newer sofa? Is that you're thinking a big one? Probably would be a more modern sofa. Uh, oh, I know. It can't be a customer's because. Yeah, yeah, it, it has to be. To be mine. Yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. Well, I, don't, I, don't, I, I, well, I the Get only thing is sofa. the only thing I've been seeing I've I've been seeing them and then I don't see them. But I mean at least something comparable to what I have right now as far as width. Because mine's about eight feet. Take seven, a picture eight of it feet. next time you're there. Yeah. yeah. And it's a modern know. one. It's it's okay. It doesn't but I would prefer you know, again, we all talked about the projects that people might want to see and how we all kind of get it together and yeah. you know I think it's important you yeah. know keep the keep the uh, customers happy keep the uh, fans happy too and speaking of fans Jimmy is wearing a tape a soft tape measure I wear this from the moment yeah. I get up to the time we go to bed so right. didn't like that. and somebody yeah. didn't like the fact that you were using a steel tape measure well you know what I have to talk to you <laughs> I think as the management they should have things here for me but they don't <laughs> and I have to really speak to them. The I think the my I think my he's shop. Thrown it upstairs. I, I think the upholsterer's shop steward should, you know, the five and six, seven, eights is uh, <laughs> definitely not doing his job. So, so let's get to the YouTube. Um, I apologize, everyone. All four of us here under the weather still. Yeah. So we're going. That's why we, we were not. Weird. That's why we were not around last week. <laughs> yeah. I wasn't sure what. Poor we Jimmy was sick on Thanksgiving. Do you even at least enjoy your turkey at least? Uh, no, it didn't really matter. No. Jimmy, do you want to read these? Oh, might as well. Let me let me just help on you. the Facebook. You just have to put it up to the camera, the pictures. But other and you have to read the thumbnail first. And tell Hello, them. Alina from Brazil. Very cool. Oh, I love. Oh, I like to become an upholsterer. Patrick uh, has. I a think you know what? I still think we should you know get let's get on that go fund. Yeah, let's that would let's be a good travel. Place to travel too. Oh yeah, Brazil. Yeah. Oh, oh there for yeah. a few days. You know it's summer say. there right now, so they have a lot of coffee in Brazil. That's what they say. Well, we can chew on a few beans and keep. It. <laughs> they serve you right on the beach. So Is that right? Was telling me, yeah. You get fruit. You get all sorts of Is stuff. It, like here, where you just go and there's nothing. You know. Oh, you're on your own. I they mean, always you... brag about that. They say you go to the beach over there in Brazil. They come to your chair. They they have. This fruit. is obviously like a resort. And maybe, but they were saying it's. Uh, I don't know what they were saying. I don't know if that's every beach. Uh, maybe uh, Alina can tell us. But I don't know. I don't even know. the public beaches, everywhere. Even in your Are tub. Are you sure? They come in your bathtub. The most I've seen in North Carolina, they brought a little uh, Italian ice cart by. 
Well, that's nice, though. Yeah, it was cool. <laughs> So read the thumbnail first. Anyway. Yes, yeah, so how to fix an East Lake chair. And let's see, my 1950 so many times that the wood is so filled with nail holes that it cannot be re-nailed with webbing anymore. Help yeah. me. She needs, so those are called tack strips or wood tack strips, I call them, where you, where you nail. And sometimes you have to bite the billet, bullet on older pieces. You need a, a woodworker to come in and, and, and do it properly. So a lot of, t well, that means taking the old, rails off mm -hmm. and then sanding it well and then and then adding wood rails that are not pine or soft wood because you need to be tacking into it so it has to be a hard wood um, and then usually what the woodworker does today they'll screw it in they'll uh, and 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 also they won't dowel it they'll screw it in and they'll clamp it to make sure that it's it's good so well, okay yeah okay but not uh, not a wood too um, you don't want to use oak. Um, that's too hard. You you need a, a probably a medium. Oh yeah, definitely. A hope. medium wood. Poplar maybe. Poplars are good. Yeah, yeah. poplars good. Malcolm roasted here, Jimmy. He What's said craftsmen are supposed to provide their own tools. He said. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and Malcolm, I, check out Facebook because he has an Etsy shop up. Oh, and he has a video he posted on there. Good. I couldn't find a way to put the video on here. Well, we love content. But go we there and check it out. Yeah. yeah he's, it's pretty cool. And I like his logo. It's a skull. Yeah. Uh, well, I it. think it's, uh, yeah. I sorry, it, uh, it's the Happy Jack, whatever they call it, isn't yep. it? Yep. So Captain check out Jack. Malcolm's. Uh, what is it? Captain Jack? Captain Jack, is yeah, that what it is? Might be, I think. Check out Malcolm's Etsy page, guys, if you have a chance. Jolly okay. Roger. Jolly, Jolly Roger. Roger. Oh, you like yeah. it? That's yeah. what Malcolm is. So anyway, the next one is applying trim to the French chairs. I am a this is from Glenda, Glenda Martin. Okay, I'm a new subscriber. Thank you for your for a wonderful tutorial for putting GIMP trim on a gorgeous French chair. I learned several new tricks for finishing my upholstery. So thank you to you. So GIMP is underrated. I mean, there are little hacks or little tricks. I hate using the word hack. But I just did a round uh, upholstered seat where the upholstery is just around the wood. There's wood on the top, and the mm -hmm. upholstery is in the interior. And it's completely round. Mm -hmm. It was an antique. And the, the customer picked a tape. I didn't have anything to do with the picking of the trim. But there's a difference between gimp and trim. So this was a trim, which I put on as expertly as I could. But the problem with trim is, Jimmy, mm -hmm. it doesn't have the flexibility as gimp does. Okay. So you really have to know your materials, you guys. I, I And this sofa, I'll bring up what happened on this sofa. Again, it was supplied to me a trim, but it's a very thin trim. And so you'd be surprised, the head of a six ounce tack or a staple that's not completely, you know, parallel with the other staple, on a thinner trim, you'll see, you'll start seeing behind it, and that's bad. So I, I have a problem solving thing that I did on this that I'll sh I want to show people on this okay. one uh, as, as to overcome that problem. So the next one is uh, how to use and choose trim. This is by Bella Nova Studios. It says great video thank you I plan to upholster a lovely French chair. Is that the same one you just read? No, it's, this is oh, it's another, another one. one with the like, French trim is in these days, I guess. Well, it might be it might be the material to use it for the project. Yeah. You know? I mean, next one is the how to build a slip seat. What kind of wood and what size did you use for the seat base? I'm not sure which video. I can't remember that. Well, Does you want to take a look at the picture, yeah. maybe the, the bottom, very bottom one. I think that was poplar. Okay, what's the thickness on it? Um, Half inch? That's been so long ago, I can't remember. I always recommend when you're building a slip seat, it looks like a solid piece of wood. And remember, mm -hmm. I'm only, I, I can only do what the customer wants. So I, I, that's probably a customer's piece, okay. which I price out as, okay, one solid piece of wood or a frame. Okay. Building so a frame. So the difference is price. The ones, uh, building a frame is like double the price of cutting a piece of wood out. But I always but recommend a frame with the webbing with the webbing strapping and the burlap and so on, then I do a solid piece of wood. But most comfort. of the time it's plywood, right? I mean... Plywood. I can't tell if that's plywood. I mean, plywood does does the trick. Yes. You know, but uh, what's as long usually as about half, half inches. Does thing. it depend on the width of the seat? Uh, it depends the, on... It's a good question, Jimmy. Because uh, some are 
drop in and right. when you when you have a drop in you have to you have to really be good at cutting it out and only leaving about a quarter of an inch on each side right because you still got the material and cotton goes through it and then hopefully what when you're done it fits tight and within the frame can't be too tight right and then the other way is is it sits on top right it's not as not as uh, crucial no, uh, but you but probably have it screwed through from the bottom. Yeah, and you up. screw it through the bottom. On those drop-in seats, you don't even need screws. If you do it right, don't even need screws. The no, old, old antique ones don't have screws because they fit in perfectly tight. Mm. I'm talking about the drop-in ones. Yeah. Not the ones you just mentioned. Okay. But, you know, I did want to say something about slip seats. Okay. People think slip seats are easy, but they're not. You know, for beginners, they're not easy because it, it moves. You can't hold it. You can't clamp it down like it can wood. Okay. You have to you have to you have to upholster a piece really that's moving on you, and you have to get used to you know putting it under your armpit and and stretching the fabric and things like that. Two people can't do it either. Okay. <coughs> the next me. one is the how to upholster an eighteen sixties chair part six, which is double piping. I watched all six episodes start to finish and loved watching you and listening to your accent. I learned so much. I'm going to be working on my first project and feel like I'm well prepared. And this is from Jennifer Bath. Where is she from? I don't know. Well, Jennifer, you know, the Boston accent <coughs> me 30 years ago was considered uh, brutish. You know, you were brute. With really? That. Oh, yeah. Um, you were very brutish. Uh, nobody liked the Boston accent until those, those brothers came and started making all the movies. And then people first they laughed, and then they they got used to the they got used well, to Well, we have the different language, of course, like lang you know different terms of throughout the country. Like we we put a lot of a h on our words, like yeah. Worcester, Worcester, and Dorchester. Dorchester, everything's an ah. If you could say ah, you could speak Boston. And right, still, Jimmy? yeah, we have our own book. We'll be coming up with a new book. Probably. But I, but I have some fun. I used to teach an adult ed 30, 30 years ago. Oh my God, forty almost. And they used to have a class there. And the class was called "How to Reduce Your Boston Accent in One Easy Lesson or Two." Let me tell you, you can, you can tell. And I mean, of course, different. You you know it too. Different parts of Boston, people you people can, I can pick up on a different accent of where they are. I had somebody from Mufford, Mufford, yeah, Mufford, come Medford, in. Dorchester, <laughs> Manapan, Hyde Park. How about Somerville? Somerville has their own little thing too. Yeah. yeah Revere and, and Medford are almost the it's same. It's amazing just that because these are people don't realize that women from Brazil probably doesn't know what we're talking about. These are close and, and geographically they're close yeah, together. Yeah, they're probably 20 minutes away from each other. It almost reminds yeah. me of New York and New York, the well, you can Right, yeah, but you yeah, have the same thing. You can tell somebody from Brooklyn. Yeah. Ma uh, yeah, Ma Manhattan and so on. I mean, all, Do you know all, that there are boroughs in New York where people were born? And died and never left the borough. No. Hey, long so, life just like the North End here. Yeah. Same way. You know? Speaking of Somerville. Yes. Uh, Ch Sherry, I think, or Cherry, Somerville, which is Oh, wow. Last Somerville, name, Massachusetts. It seems like. Oh. Not from Somerville. That's the last name. Mm. Uh, hello from Southeast Arizona. Oh, wow. Your channel gave me the inspiration, uh, your channel gave me the instruction and courage to attend my first reupholstery job. Wow, An old mission-style oak rocker. Thank you. First time in the live stream. See, Jimmy? Did we, uh, did she put up a uh, finished product? No, it's her first time here, so. Oh. Look at that. Let her know about the uh, Facebook Bef forum. Yeah, before yeah. we go on, Jimmy, would you like to talk about the Facebook forum as the I administrator? Haven't done, I haven't, no, I haven't welcomed anybody in months. So. Oh, I, I've been doing it, I've been doing it. Oh, you took your job because yeah, and then yeah. no wonder why I get no commission anymore. <laughs> well, fairness, thank I, you, I was supposed thank to be you. Doing you know it what? Anyway. I, I, now I, mean, I know. Just now, I, now I know why my my the checking account is a little leaner than than, than before. <laughs> but tell her about any help of you is good. Jim. Tell them about the Facebook form. Well, how does it help? How has it made your life? How has it changed oh, your life? Oh, you're so full of yourself. You and your son. I mean, <laughs> you she wants to post that old rocker on there. Right. <laughs> yeah, that would be so. yeah. So we have a Facebook uh, page. And a lot of people put their projects uh, on it, and also they ask questions about upholstery per se with um, techniques and what you should use and what you should not. And I think a lot of people are very helpful if they've, uh, you know, experienced some projects in, in their life and uh, they kind of like pass information along to and from. And it's been going on for a few years. And uh, now. we encourage downloads, yes. we encourage. 
uh, a lot of times people are helping one another. And I don't even see it. I don't. You very rarely. Well, you should get in. on it a little bit more. I do though. Uh, but I, 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 well, all right. Uh, yeah. Okay. Thank you for thank you for sharing. Jim. All right. Now you're picking on me. Go on to the next one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. How to make double piping? This is from uh, Ms. Crazy Cat Lady, seventy-five. Easy peasy. It was a piece of cake. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you. What was that? Uh, it, it's a piece of cake when you're shown the right way of doing it. People have different ways of doing double weld. I've watched people use single piping and a zipper foot to make double welting, and I'm going, oh my goodness. Well, it's a lot of work. It's their perception of what you, what they're doing. <laughs> right, but it, it's it, there's so many extra steps. The way I show it, not only does it come out as a really good uh, double piping, but it's quicker. Okay. Probably the quickest way. I mean, when you start to get into, we have people who have opened shops like Blair down in Alabama. How is he? Have you ever talked to him at all? He's just so busy. He's posting, Patrick. You see him post, I see him post on his regular Facebook, but not on the, I don't think he posts on our form, which is fine. He's just busy. But yeah, um, I mean, he's got his own thing. <clears throat> yeah, he's doing great. Yeah. Sarah likes the uh, way you say regulator. Regulator. Yeah. <laughs> A-H at the end, Jimmy. Again, the A-H word. <laughs> All right, moving on. Treasures of Upholstery, uh, episode number three, the 1840 Victorian sofa. Yeah. I usually throw some cha some change in sofas before the teardown guy gets to it. Oh. Gives him something to look for. That's a good idea. Yeah, so what are you going to do? <clears throat> Get, like, what, something, a receipt from... I a receipt will probably change. I think that's a very nice thing to do for somebody. Throw a little money in there. You got a whole pocket full of change there. Yeah, yeah. Well, so much for cleaning out the car today. So the, there you go. A little cold to be doing that. <laughs> you know. And so, then racing over here while you guys were like kind of taking your time to get in here today. Yeah, uh, Jimmy was the first one here, and and, and I was the furthest, furthest away. We had a lot of different uh, issues before. We had batteries that weren't working on the on the mouse, on the keyboard, and the camera. So we had a trifecta going on. No oh, God, father like father like son. That's all I can say. <laughs> did I answer that question about the double piping? Uh, no, but give it again. Well, I think I did. You go uh, on to the next one, Jimmy, if you don't mind. Uh, the amazing 1800 sofa. I guess. Thanks for this amazing video. The amount of information you shared was phenomenal. The DNA aspect is completely new to me. Yeah. It should be gross, but it's not. Thank you again. <laughs> Just amazing. This is from. Betus? Le Le Lepus? Lupus? Yeah, when you think about the DNA factor, she's talking about, I pointed out on that 1800 sofa that the, that the tacks were rusty. People right. Don't, and the tacks are rusty from the saliva of the upholster who was spitting tacks. Right. But that was that was a, something you, that was part of the gig when you started out. Oh, yeah, I started out spitting tacks. It was true. You had to be quick. I remember, really? I remember one time, I like telling this story. I know I've told it a few times, but I'm going to tell it again. Because it's just fun. And by the way, that's a double flip there. Oops! <laughs> Don't make that <laughs> an Olympic tossing event. Is that what you want to go? But here's a, here's the perfect hammer for upholstery, designed for upholsters. <coughs> and um, the hammer has a magnetic end that actually that actually picks up the, the the tacks, and it has a hammer side. So you're picking up the tacks with the magnetic end, and you're tapping, you're flipping your hand hammer over, and you're tacking the tack the rest of the way in. And, and you have the tacks in your mouth. I'm not going to do it now. You put the tacks in your mouth. I knew a guy, he was a legend in the upholstery industry. He could put three ounce tacks, which is the smallest tack, Jimmy, in one mouthful. Another six ounce in this cheek. Oh my God. And 14 ounce tacks, the big ones, right in front here. So he, he could call up each any size tack with his tongue. Now I wasn't this talented, but I was really good with the six ounce, only one size tacks, the six ounce tacks. But this fellow could call up depending on what he was doing. And the way you do it when you're, when you're working tacks, when you're spitting tacks, your hand is up like this when, you, when you're taking it in for some reason. I don't know why. But um, it, it's as fast as this. Probably a balance issue. You feel like you got some control. I'll show you. That's probably what it is. But it is fat. It is, see if I can do this. It's, it's, your hand is moving so fast. And, and you're, you're, you're so good that you're, you're coming up to your mouth. You notice the little dip there? Yeah. That dip there is that it perfectly comes up to your mouth. And, and what's happening inside your mouth is that you're rolling the tacks, if they're not already head first coming out, your tongue is rolling them. 
So each each time your tongue is, is so moving, moving inside your, your mouth, and you're planting the, the tack on your lips. And you have to be fast, because the, the other guy is, is competing with you. There was a lot of competition when I was first starting out. So we had uh, a local television crew come in, Jimmy, yeah. at this antique shop that I was working in. And um, uh, the idea was to get a speaking part on this, because they said that it's only going to be the producer, no speaking parts to all the, all the artists that were there. And I said to all the managers of each department, I said, your job is to get a speaking part, no matter what they said. So make sure you do something interesting. Have something interesting set up. So I had this set up, had my tacks in my mouth, and I'm, I'm working. Mm -hmm. I'm working away, and I, the, the producer says, cut, or the director, whatever they call him. And she came over, and she looked, at, she looked at the hammer. She went like this. She said, where are the tacks coming out from here? And that was my opportunity. I said, they're not in the hammer. They're in my mouth. <laughs> She couldn't believe it, so I well, got a, I got a speaking part. That was the idea was. So that was and idea. where did it land you? It, it landed did me. Did he get you a part in any famous movie? I uh, know OSHA I called don't. OSHA called and there was a heavy fine. <laughs> I'm just kidding. That didn't happen. <coughs> All right, Jimmy. That's the end of that tack. Is there any other comments, Patrick? Or my hey, Daniel. Daniel Sierra, who's been on before. Yeah, hi, Daniel. Um, yep, that's it. There's What's the next project? one, Jimmy? Oh, so a lot left. Uh, the upholstery show. Jimmy is back. New class. So this is, thank you for this video. I'm a retired woman who used to live in Boston and worked for the Opera Company of Boston in the 1970s. Ooh. Wow. I have worked on stage props and made fake and upholstered antiques for shows. Oh. I'm enjoying your videos and, and love what you're doing. I have four years I need work with the horse here and fiber filling. I can't wait to see your next video. So tell her about tell the people about your delivery that you went on with that chair. What chair? The opera chair from New York, the oh. Met. You delivered a small chair that didn't look like much, but it was actually a chair from the New York Metropolitan Opera. But to that woman in Cambridge? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. I didn't yes. know it was that chair was. She bought that at auction when they were closing the uh, that, Met Opera. I mean, that's really. I mean, a piece that's of a history. That's a piece of history. I mean, right for now. somebody who knows of the Metropolitan yeah. Opera, I mean, it's always. I think it's great when you have no, no yeah, kind of like Fenway Park. Everybody has their own, you know. It's a, it's a wicked awesome place. Yeah, well, I mean, if you like the the <laughs> Met, and you know, there's nothing absolutely no. I I loved it. I would Boston. It. Boston has a, a, their culture too, even with the language the way it is. Well, I mean, we have our own little thing. I mean, God the MFA forbid. is one of the best museums in the world. I have never gone. Jimmy, I have no. I, they I've, have worked, an I've, wor there. I've worked at the other, another famous museum, the Fargot Museum. Oh, Harvard that's a good one. Yeah, Fargot yeah. Museum yeah. and Harvard University. That's so a good one. I did, I did work there for a couple of years. What did you do there? Security work. That's an important job. Yep. Yeah. So I mean, I wish we, at the time with all that had come through the building as far as artists and and so we had Jacob uh, Van Roosdale and a few other people. But to know about the the artists themselves, to get I, was, I was listening to Don McLean's uh, uh, his his song about Van Gogh. Oh, okay. That's a beautiful song, isn't it? I don't remember that one. Vincent, Vincent. Oh, the name of the song. okay. Yeah, it's been some time since Vincent I've heard Van Gogh. It. It's a beautiful, beautiful song about art. It's it it tells the story of of a uh, desperate artist, Jimmy. Really? Yes, like yourself. I, My, you, I work on other jobs, so I don't. <laughs> So you ready for the next one? Yeah. This is from Roy Smith. Hi, has anyone put in coil springs in the Chesterfield captain's chair? And if so, what is the best size to use? Oh, Chesterfield, uh, my nemesis. I don't like the design. He's talking about a traditional Chesterfield with the tufted buttons and the seats. Bad idea. Well, I mean, like, let's, let's help the man. Pull. Well, it, you let's know, help if, the man. he should probably go with an upholstered seat instead of any buttons in the seat. It's not a good idea because you can imagine, you guys, on the back cushion, backs are fine with tufting. You're using a heavy nylon twine, which we're going to show you here in a minute. Um, on the backs, so you're not getting the tension, you're not getting the recoil that you do on the seats. So a lot of times, the, even if it's a heavy nylon twine, the twine gives out or the knot gives out and then the button pops and then you're in big trouble. Then, then the licensing people are after you, right, Jimmy? Are they? I don't know. <laughs> I wouldn't know that. I don't have anybody after me these days. 
Are you trying to say, are you trying to confess something on here? No, no, no. Are you sure? <laughs> okay. Uh, any other questions, Patrick? Nope. Jimmy's going to go to the <coughs> Facebook now, Facebook forum. How many people do we have on the Facebook forum? I just looked at almost 600. 600 people, Jimmy. So if well, you had them, they, they wouldn't fit in this room, like Jimmy. They wouldn't fit in this room. <laughs> Any, any three more people might have a crowd. <laughs> anyway, we have one here from Sarah Jeffrey. It's been a while since I have posted, and even longer since I did a DIY project. My sister asked me to change the fabric on her dining chairs. This is the first time I've done a chair that was in an antique. I'm pretty happy with them. Minus the crooked decorative tacks. We'll adjust those later on. Should have probably used ply grip but try to save on the fabric by hand stitching the sides. Need to work on my stitching and pleating. Explain to my sister that the ripples... I don't know, I think you guys lost something here. Patrick, can you help him with that? I probably didn't put them all unless they see more. Julie Doyle, she's got a couple things going. Is this it, Patrick? I don't know if it's a different post she posted. That's different. Which one is that, Jimmy? Can I see the picture of it? The one that... Sure. What does it have on it there? Well, show the camera this first, Jimmy, because I think she did a good job. She's just being very hard on herself, which isn't a bad thing. Well, I... This is ripples. From hand stitching gives a character. Yep. And it's better if it doesn't look machine sewn. Yes. Sound familiar? The yeah. last photo is the culprit, the, why I knew these were covered in the first place, and it's the cat. <laughs> oh, the cat. It's a really yeah. nice looking cat. Huh? Is the cat still there? Pretty cat. Must be. But that's what hand stitching is. You know, my students, when I teach, like Jimmy, I teach a student how to hand stitch, and I find that they're too good. They, they, they're too good. Well, and I they, tell them to you know, miss, a cup, miss, uh, miss a little bit here and there, just to indicate that it is hand stitched. Well, it takes, it takes time to get the hand stitching technique down. I mean, yeah. it's, it's really, you know, it gets to be monotonous to a point, but some people don't realize, you know, especially when you're doing the backs or sides of a chair, it, it, it's time consuming. So don't expect, oh, it's going to be done in 10 minutes. It's going to take some time with that. Uh, the next one. One sec, guys. Hold on. Something happened. Um, so an error occurred. Hold on. I want to make sure we're still live. Uh, it's really weird. Hey, it's been very smooth with the software, huh? There we go. <laughs> I, think, I don't think we lost anybody. Nope. Okay. Wait, I but hope on my end, it's an error occurred, but no, we're back now. Okay. This next one is from Julie, Julie Doyle, too, as well. This one is a, well, I've stripped down to here today. Good news is that it's not su stuffed with straw. It's coconut here. So hoping I can reuse that. Unfortunately, someone has removed the top layer of cross here on the seat and replaced with foam. The original fabric was still on wing, was still on wings and armed. I'm still going. I'm going to try to hand wash that and put it back. But I'm not hand washing the coconut. I don't. Re, I don't uh, suggest reusing coconut. Yet. No. It doesn't have the resiliency horsehair does. So well, I, I and you can't to. wash. You can't. You found that out, right? Well, I, I don't think. I Tell think us. Uh, didn't you wash coconut fiber? I washed coconut fiber because I thought it was going to be on the same principle. It was a big faucet. problem. Well, the problem being is that my dryer was very warm, and I was afraid that it was going to get too brittle. Right. Too, you know. But then, I think I remember the pillowcase was full of this clumpy horsehair. Yeah, mean, it didn't. It didn't. I it mean, didn't again, well. it's something that I think probably. It was, I did it in the fall of the winter, so I think if I had washed it out and left it like on a sunny day naturally to dry, I think it definitely probably might have worked. So I think... It's, it's, it was so sad. I, I contacted the Hawaiian uh, Tourist uh, you did. Council yeah. about well, your plight. What was the, what, 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 who was the president? Don Ho? <laughs> wanted to get you some free tickets out there to climb some coconut trees. Yeah, so I can kind of strip them down, <laughs> right? You know how Jimmy spent a weekend retrieving a pound of coconut, yeah. So I got you up on a coconut tree, and I got you in a yeah. horse farm. Singing tiny bubbles. <laughs> Are you listening to this, to, to Patrick? Yeah, I think right. we're waking no. him up. You know you know what the problem is with this younger generation? Yeah, they think, oh, I've done this before. They you have, haven't, you haven't, you, you... They have no sense of humor. No. And they miss... Dry as, dry as can be. Dry as can be. And they miss ninety percent of the references. Right. Like, they have I don't no even idea. know if he knows what a coconut tree looks like. I. You know what? 
I got you up on the tree. Thank, I see you know the what? Palms. All I can say, all I can say is thank God for National Geographic. I know. Because you and I grew up. You watched up, that, didn't you? Cut the magazines, didn't you? Yeah. Well, for and a while I you, did. You were I, like, you liked the pitches. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, again, <laughs> get back to him. <laughs> all right. What's the next one? The next one is a last one from Julie Doyle as well. Four, re four recovers by the look of it. I'll take. I give you. What I'll is it? Take a look at that. Oh, that's crazy. Four times somebody upholstered it. She's got a lot, Julie. I feel bad for you. I just had a piece like eight dining room chairs with three covers on it. Yeah. Well, and it, it took me a week just to strip them down. That is like. Show, a, show, I'll show the camera that one. Yeah, that's we're going to. You can talk about how Just bad. look like at the mess. That's pretty sad. It is. But you know what? Sometimes when you're pricing a job professionally, you don't know what's underneath, and I, I never call the client and say, woe is me, there were three covers under there, it took me three times as long to Well, see, know. that's when you That's gotta, not their problem. That's, right, exactly. Well, here's the thing, too. I mean, you know, you don't mind if there's a, a lay I mean, I had it with the wingback chair that I did. Yeah. It was it was like, what the, what is this? But, of course, some people passing furniture on, along, and instead of saying, oh, don't, just add to it. Don't, just throw another... Now, yeah. now you've got three within, well, say... What happens is, it's funny, it reminds me of a chair. I did this French armchair, an upholstered French armchair. The woman told me it was French, and I said, are you sure? Because it doesn't look like French to me. And uh, she said she insisted it was a French uh, armchair. Okay. Now, my idea of a French armchair, the, the <coughs> when you think anything French, and you had that French C, anything French is curvy. They love curves. Okay. They love they love curves, right? Okay. We all love curves, right, Jimmy? Oh well, yeah. Some more than others. I mean, <laughs> but in design, curves. Oh, I'm sorry. I think you're thinking of something else. <laughs> no, curves are beautiful, right? Yes. You, you don't have to be worried about it. Curves are beautiful, and and so the the arm of the chair. Let me see, let me get my when I when I got this chair. I love upholstery because it brings up French. It brings up what's beautiful. It brings, uh, you know, bring back history. Things, yeah. So when you're looking at this uh, club chair, okay, the the arm went like this. It kind of went like this. Okay, this is the side view of the arm, right? This is the back. Okay. Right, and this is the legs. Right? Okay. And so I was saying, are you sure? It's, it looks. It doesn't look French to me. So what had happened over the years? Uh, People were covering, like you said, they just went over and over and over. They changed the style they, of the chair. They did, because a French chair has this beautiful little saddle like this. Right. Okay? That's how it's supposed to look. So when I saddled it, when I, I had to take everything apart, start all over again, repick the horse hair, the original horse hair, and got it. When I brought that into the house, yeah. the woman started to cry. Why? Because she remembered it, that's how she remembered her French chair when she was a, a now young was child. this was the side closed? All of this, yeah. This is a, this is upholstery. Okay. But they had gone over this so many times, so many fabrics and cottons in there that it it ended up being like that. They actually decided to put <clears throat> cotton again on cotton top of the old fabric, fabric cotton and then over the new fabric. By the time they were done, and the whole chair overall looked too big, so I brought it back. Well, how could they have contained? Two or three levels. They did. I it's mean, they must have like stretched. It listen, too. it was a lot easier for them to do that um, than it was to strip it like I had to do. Yeah, but yeah, but uh, yeah, but yeah, but you're talking about three different works. But they, she she remembered that chair as a child, and it was probably her mother's chair, or whatever. She but I, I, re I mean, I really feel bad for Julie because I'm sorry. I do too. It brought I mean, back that memory. You look memory, at this though. and say, okay, well, how did they work it? Well, they just like threw it on and stitched it up in the old way, and yeah. and now you're trying to do undo the work of four different people. That's right, Jimmy. Let's let's move this over here. Here, I'll take it out of your way. So you, you can take that out of the way. That's OSHA approved. Don't worry. We're gonna get Jimmy doing some horse hair. So you went to the farm. You you wrestled the horse. You you yeah. picked its hair. Yeah. Yeah, and, and, uh, it was hard. I actually, <laughs> I was picked from the wrong side, but that's okay. All right, can we see over here, Patrick? Yeah, from above. Move this way, also be above too. Let's so. move Jimmy's chair. Your next job is to get milk from the the cows on that same farm for well, us. Oh, they're not up at that hour. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Jimmy. What I want you to do is grab um, a handful of a, an ample, a little bit more than a handful, like. 
Let's call that a toupee at a time, right? A toupee at a time. Well, that's a good size, though. Like, like I mean, I, I played okay. with that a little bit, and I think it's smooth. And what I want you to do is kind of place that in like this. Okay, and I'm going to show you the second one. That's all I have to show you. And then what you're going to do is row and a row here. Okay. okay? So is, that, is the way you're showing me is the normal way to do it? Or yeah. Is it? The idea is, you know, when you take it out, um, this is picked horse hair, but you have to pick it a little bit more just to get it a little bit looser. You see, feel that. Do you want it looser? A little looser, not much, just like that. Okay. You, you're looking for anything ball in there, a balled up a piece yeah, or anything. Yeah, like I got or, a couple or here. Something could pick it right out if, it, if it's But are we too trying much. to make this flat or what are we trying to... Well, what you're trying to do is you, you, you have a neat... You're, you're a chef. You've done dough. You've done dough. You've yeah. worked with dough. It's like right. working with dough. You need, you, need the, you need it in. Okay. So the idea here is... Um, kneading this into this, incorporating so that this looks like one piece. That's the idea. That's the trick to using horse right. hair. Okay, so okay. when you put it in, and, and believe it or not, the horse hair really helps you because it kind of locks into place, all those little hairs. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to push this, and my fingers, I'm just kind of kneading it in there. I'm, I'm putting it in a little bit, I'm putting it a little bit in here. And 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 then feel that, Jimmy. What do you think? Mm. It looks pretty. Yeah. I mean, there's no lumps on it. At I all. keep going. Okay. You go do the bottom row and then do a top row, and, and the, on the top row you're going to have to knead it both ways, Jimmy. You're going to have on the top row. You're going to have to knead it into here and each other as you go along. So the the goal is that when you're done, that's one layer. It looks like one layer horse head just rolled out. Okay. Okay. I get a sun sun tan out of this. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Yeah, that's expensive, but yeah. Jimmy's never done it in the class. Very cool. I'll do slip seats or something. Yeah. All right, Kevin. Let me take a look at it, Jimmy. Yeah, I think I did. Watch yeah. the camera behind me. Oh. <coughs> so, um, it's good that this is oversized a little bit because you squeezing it together is also a technique. Mm -hmm. So what we do need, just to let you know, on the tack wheels need to be exposed. That's what we're going to be tacking. Okay. Okay, so you don't want it over, but but I'm just going to feel this way first. That's, you know, I can tell that 
it's your it's your baking it's your it's your cooking that really did really i'm not kidding I, I know we tease each other a little bit but that's really good thank you it's been a while and I, and you know you're gonna remember that you know this what like you say um with the horse here you have to make sure that you know, you want it to be right before you put the fabric on and anything well, else. We're going to put muslin on this Yes, first. but you want to make sure there's no lumps. You want to yep. make it sure that it's going to be, again, no knots at all either. And I didn't find anything in the in The, the horse is really a good horse. <coughs> it's, oh, it, it comes is. in clean. It's, it's, uh, it's a beautiful Yeah, it's just a matter of trying to product. like fluff it up and make sure that you're going to get that. If I had it my way, I would use it everywhere because it's, it's, it's the perfect batting for you guys. Uh, batting, it can be anything from cotton. Acron, horsehair, coconut fiber, mm -hmm. nightgowns. I've actually taken up a, a pod that had nightgowns in. Any clothing, pants. You left your pants at the shop, by the way, the other day. I'm waiting. Me. You know, I'm waiting to go back to work and <laughs> work, <laughs> work like six, work like sixty hours a week. Uh, hey, I let, might be moving in soon. That one bedroom condo downstairs. Let me clear that up. Jimmy works two jobs, so well, if you look at this as a job, sometimes he's coming in off working from three in the morning until what? Noon. At noon. You're coming in and you have to change, right? And into your upholstery wear, kind of yep. like what you're dressed as now. But right. I, this is really good. Thank you for the for. The, so so the, this part here, I'll just simply just kind of squeeze it down so that we see our tack rail, right? Okay. And I don't think I want to undo or take anything out. Maybe it just a little bit there. So when you're doing this, Kevin, the way we are, right? You don't really want to go over the over the area too much. No, with. you want to keep your tack lines open. Okay. Okay, and then we might even have to trim a little bit after this. But now I want what I want you to do is Jimmy. I like Daniel's comment. What? Beautiful moss. Yeah. yeah. Actually, he's right. <laughs> Actually, we there is moss is used sometimes too as a batting. Okay, that wouldn't deteriorate. Uh. <laughs> now, how do they even even today, or is that something historically? Um, <coughs> that would be. Cool. There has been tests people have tested different battings over the years okay and, and it's not a good batting not a good <laughs> well batting. i think with moisture i don't know how you would dry it out that i know would be i know good to anybody but so now you see now i'm going to have you by the way we we have webbing and burlap on this the webbing first and the burlap and now the horse hair okay now what i want you to do is i, I want you to very gently I want you to uh, tie the horse hair in place so that it doesn't shift on us okay? okay so what i want you to do is i want you to do um, maybe three rows of of stitching. So when so you when you do a stitch, you don't want to take the you want to take the twine from one row is usually about three three times what you need. Okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna show you the first row, Jimmy, and then I'll let you do the other rows. I'll now, is some. there only how many different techniques? I mean, considering it's only a small area anyway. Well, we because. have we have this is called a kind of a back stitch. Okay. And then we have very important, which we're not going to use here, which I used underneath here, which I'll explain in a minute. Um, a blanket stitch. Those are two basic stitches for horse hair. Okay. So what you want to do is you want to go and th and by the way, you need a big needle. Do you need a big needle? You can't do this with a small needle. A lot mm -hmm. of people have small needles. Oh, medium. In, invest medium in a big tool. needle. This is a this is a five inch needle. You know how they tell five inch? The the width. The opening here. Okay. It's a five inch needle, and that and I have needles that I've, I've lost them. I had a Should big. Show the camera down one more time. I had an eight inch needle. I had a needle wow. out to here, no an way. antique needle. I can't get those anymore. I don't think these ones are five inch. Probably the most you can get today, but they do the job. So what you need to do is you, you need to go in. In my pocket. Yep. Candy or coffee drop on the right, I believe on the right. Yeah. I'm going to say the jacket. Oh, so, yeah. Jimmy, what you're trying to do is grab hold of the, the, the burlap and the, and the it's webbing. Struggling to, uh, it's going to be tough for me to get that, uh, the overhead won't work. I'm trying to move the camera where Jimmy is. It's okay. You want me to move it out of the way? This won't reach. Look. Oh, tell me when you're ready. <laughs> Tangling of wires here. Are they still listening so, to us? Yeah, keep going. Yeah. So what I did is I just threaded that first one for Jimmy, and then I'm just going to tie this off. The object here is to use your your full length of the needle as much as you can in order to grab hold um, of as much of the. See, see, I've got a big distance there. Mm -hmm. So, so that's what holds it in place. So my next needle, I'm going to incorporate this in for it doesn't slip. See that. My next in will be right here, and you see what that's going to do? It's going to hold it in place a little bit, right? This isn't like a back stitch uh, that okay. we use in other other areas. 
So let me just do this next one. I'm through. You got to make sure you're through there. And you know you're gonna find, Jimmy. You're gonna have to get used to this. I don't know if you see. I had to do a little probing there. Yeah. Well, now you see. You see how I have this nice uh, transition here. Okay. And and you see this next one. I think I might even come back here. I kind of kind of back. And just get that taken care of see and I'm not pulling this super tight I don't want to make too many dents in the in the horse there all right okay yeah. and then I'm gonna finish this off I'm gonna come right to about here and I'm gonna put another one here it doesn't have to be neat neatness doesn't come in this case but you want it kind of like making sure that it, especially with three rows you want some type of I don't want it to I, I don't want this to fall down as oh, in no. use. Okay, and just to tie it off, you can go underneath here, just very close, and then just, that's it, okay? See how you do with the next one. And I think, you know, Jimmy, I want you to explain, um, I can I explain something first with the curved needle? You know about curved needles, you guys, if you've, most people are used to using straight needles, so you're poking, it's more of a poking motion. Yeah. With curved needles, your wrist, see my wrist, watch this, you guys. Watch my wrist. See how my wrist is moving with the curve of the needle? Most I, I notice people when I when that when I'm teaching them this beginners, they're poking like this, they're not getting it. You have to really swing your wrist. You really yeah. have to get your wrist on. Let's see. Well how they you used do, to you know show people, did you cut that three times bigger? I believe I probably have way more than I need, yeah. I could tell you that.
How's it going, Jimmy? Yeah, it's going. I got the second row done if you want to take a look at it. Wow, look at this, Patrick. You could just clip the ends there if you want, Jimmy, because it looks great. Okay. Really good job. Yeah, I want to make sure this this will be the... Let me just pop in there for okay. a minute. Clip those. Okay. And then if you can get another one near, you're going to be near the wood on that one on the well, top. Well, yeah, would be I'll perfect. have to kind of measure that out a little bit. Perfect. Can you turn that around at that and focus sure. it up at the needle? Yeah. I just want to talk to you guys about while Jimmy's finishing that up. I want you to look at this pad. Every upholsterer should have one of these pads. This is a burlap pad with horse hair that I've stuck up here. But these we used to be called needle artists. We fell under that umbrella of needle arts. Um, as as time went on and we got away from uh, the needle work. People don't re reference us unless you're doing traditional furniture, but I kind of like the idea of being called a needle artist because that puts you under the umbrella with tailors, dressmakers, people who make wedding dresses, um, all kinds of stitches, seamstresses, um, upholsterers all falling underneath that umbrella. Um, and some of the needles that we have is regulator. Somebody was talking yeah, about a regulator. Say, that the right way. Way. say it again. Regulator. <laughs> and we have button needles, which we use. Sometimes we use this for horsehair work, like Jimmy's doing, but we have a big enough curved needle today. But if we were to use a double layer or triple layer of horsehair on seats, we might use that. Uh, we won't have a, a curved needle big enough. We will use the button needle for that. But it's mainly used for putting buttons in and all different sizes of. Uh, uh, curved needles and upholstery pins. It's an upholstery pin here, and all of this is hand stitching thread. I just thought you'd like to see that, you guys. And there's Jimmy with his needle. Doing good, man. Thank you. show more on the YouTube channel so I'm trying to tell everybody but just the time I guess so but the problem this, is this time worked out perfectly <clears throat> I know today worked out good and we're, we're really enjoying the visuals ourselves on this one but the problem is because we're an active workshop um, people want their things you know I, I people are only tolerant for a certain point for getting their stuff back um, we don't really have pieces I don't think we've ever done a piece well Jimmy did his own piece right uh, that French settee was his but it's difficult getting getting everybody coordinated too, because uh, the best YouTube is the online classes that we have. The best that we can provide is what with, with Jimmy. Time with those. Yeah, Jimmy is very um, helpful though. I mean, he was here first, by the way. Uh, we were running a little late. Jimmy was here. He's always 
Jim has been really good as always in showing up. He's, um, we give him a gold star for that. <laughs> How's it going, Jimmy? Almost done. Perfect. Thanos is awesome. Awesome, Jimmy. Thank you. It ain't easy, is it, Jimmy? No, well, you know what? It takes practice and it practice and theory, and that's what matters, so. I'm liking the way that looks. You can clip that other one. Oh, okay. That other end, and we'll clean up a little bit. Okay. I'm going to put our needle back, and then we're going to ask Patrick to bring this camera back to the front. I want to talk a little bit about what I've done. Uh, that we were going to do it, Jimmy, but then, you know. Time. Time is everything. And this Oops, took me a long time to do, Jimmy, so you can imagine. <coughs> oh, well, that's why I say it. it's like, let me just watch you do it. Let me, you know. So the Ooh. customer, you know, I don't always like working with COM, so <laughs> customer's own material or customer's own trim, because they just don't know the little nuances. So they'll go out and buy something like this. Which oh, is, looks good. This which is a great uh, match. This, this is a, I wouldn't call this a typical French trim. But it's it's a good it's a fancy trim. It's okay. it's uh, but it's thin. That's thinner than than our gimp. I don't think I have a gimp. Actually, I think you know what I have a few chairs that that we've done, mm -hmm. and I can't remember gimp being that. It's thin. Yeah, I mean I've had other things. That so let me show people the difference. So this is a, this is an average gimp that I have here. Look at that. What that means is I have to be a lot more careful with putting tack and staple work in here. And another thing, my client, my cust, excuse me, he wants to keep he wants me to keep to the original as much as possible. In other words, use tacks. Okay. And I told him, I said, I can use tacks somewhere, but not not everywhere, because especially with things like this. Right. It won't. Okay, it'll so tear. It, well, the main thing is. It, I have to use gimp tacks, by the way. He wants to. He knows. He knows a little bit about upholstery, and we used to use gimp tacks, not glue. And you kept to do that anyhow in horsehair. Glue's not going to adhere to horsehair anyhow. Right. But the little gimp tacks, those little blue headed tacks. Let me just show people. Well, I, I mentioned that I want to show. Wait, people I think it's the next box, Kevin. What they look like, yeah. That's a gimp tack. It's a very small headed blue tack. That has to be put through in the middle, in the center portion of the gimp, and probably about every two inches all the way around. Okay, wow. now the special problem this presents horsehair fabric frays. Right. You, if you just tack this without folding it and go to, and then go to trim it, it's going to fray and you're going to have a nightmare. Okay, so I had to come up with something. Uh, because of the thinness, mainly because of the thinness of the trim. Okay. So, you know, there was a lot of problem solving that went into this before I did anything. And, and another thing about this horsehair fabric, you guys, I haven't used horsehair fabric. At the last time I used a horsehair fabric, it's very expensive. How many, how much a yard? <clears throat> oh, it's like $500, $600 a yard. No way. It's very expensive. And this horsehair, every stripe is different. Every stripe, I can't match the stripe from the inside back to the seat. It's, that's how custom this is. It's custom. This comes from the tail section of the horse. Okay. So you probably have a, a lot of horses. How many that, different, yeah, 20 different and, colors? And they're all different colors. They're wow. blonde, they're brunettes, they're redheads. Do, do horses have red hair, Jimmy? Uh, I assume so. I, I, I'm <laughs> Patrick, sorry. Patrick, can you uh, Google uh, Michael this one for you? Because they, they work at a horse farm. They should know this. You how many different color? That? How many different colors can horses come in, Michaela? Well, that's a question for Michaela. Well, just like every natural hair color we have, horses have. How many do you think that is? They have different patterns, though, not just color. They have different patterns as well as well. And different consistencies. One horse might have a thin hair or a thick hair, but the point is... Yeah, like you and Jimmy. <laughs> <laughs> every one of these horse hairs is different. You have you have a weapon you can use here. <laughs> yeah, I compliment to you. So somebody will get maybe somebody will get back to us on that one. How many different how many different color hair strands are there? <clears throat> this has if you look across here in the back, I mean it a, looks it looks great. It's a representation. Look, there's a there's a dark, 
there's red, uh, reddish, there's light white, almost albino. I mean, it's, it comes in definite varieties. So going back to the trim, I had a special problem. So what I did was I thought, how am I going to get, you see this back is really important. This isn't stretched the way it should be. But this back is very important, as important as, I wasn't so worried about this area because it, there's a little lip here. Right. And that lip will keep me honest with my trim. But that back is like, here I am, you better be straight. Well, here's the thing I can suggest that, you know, because everybody's so now kind of vested in this, you should be taking pictures, guys. Yeah, uh, should, I think I'll go back and screenshot yeah. this. Uh, yeah, because, I mean, right now where it is, where we are, I mean, you, and especially, again, this is such a unique fabric. I should tell everybody, this is not pulled tight at all. Right. Because it's just but put the, on here. Right. But, they, but the, the, people, back, the back had to be blind tacked. I blind tack the inside back and then I put tape, I'm going to put uh, cardboard tack tape along there to get a really straight edge so that this doesn't have any problem going on. It's going to look as straight as it's going to look. So you're going to have that that gimp on top? Yeah. Oh, the gimp has to be, has to go all the way around. Inside and out? Yeah, everywhere. Oh, wow. Okay, and then so let me tell so people. So tell me how it's going to, show me how it's going to look on the bottom. Well, it's going to just reset in here, Jimmy. It's just going to go right inside. So it's not going to be... It's going to go right inside like this. That's it. Just like that, because there's a lip here. But the lip's going to keep me honest there. The lip's going to keep me honest in this area. When I say honest, I mean it's going to it's going to make me straight. Over here in the arms, <coughs> I have the same problem as I have in the back. And unfortunately, that's where most people are going to look. So I'm going to blind tack. The, 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 the solution is blind tacking the top of the arms. Okay. So that it gets you, and, and tack taping it, it gets you a nice straight line. That's I had to come up with this idea, because I, I haven't used a horse hair in this man in this manner. Usually, when somebody gets a horse hair, right. all the horse hair that I've ever done with, with small things like slip seats or small chairs, not sofas. This is very unusual. And um, so, let me just explain what I did on this. Um, there's a fox edging. Fox edging is the big edge roll, which I had out here, right here. So we web the seat, we burlap the seat, and on the front edge for height, because this wouldn't look good flat, and we needed height. This is on the front edge, so if you can imagine that. And then what we have in the back is a double layer horse hair, hand stitched horse hair. And then, and then in addition to the stitching that you did today, mm -hmm. I have uh, the top layers blanket stitched to this piece, so that the transition is, is horse hair to the burlap there is a tight transition. And then I have uh, muslin going over that. And then I'm gonna have, and then I have a double layer of cotton going over that, to end wow. up to end up with this. To, to end up with the height that you yeah. have it now. And on the back, I'm gonna have a uh, probably just a one layer, like the arms of of uh, horse hair and cotton, and that's it. The outsides don't get any horse hair. Oh, cool. No, yeah. no, you wouldn't. It'd be a waste. So that catches us up with this with this one, and I do. So again, I, I kind of apologize for promising something that I can't deliver on again. I, I hate to do that, but. Well, this is the, again, this is the client thing. This is yeah. not. If it um, was your piece, we could do this until the oh, summertime. Yeah. yeah. You think we'll have it here next week? We do another one? We could do another one, yeah. How many more do you think we can get? You know, next week, um, if I can get in here and do this, because we have two shops, you guys. I can come in here and get it, get it all inside, and then maybe have Jimmy help with the outside. Think, think we can get at least four of them, maybe two more? Maybe we can. Because I think well, people will be... Yeah, I mean... Literally. Yeah, let's do that. And these are free classes. Yeah, we're doing it right now. It's not going to be released yeah. in the... You know what I mean? Yeah, let's I think do we that. should focus on the do as many as we can out of this. Yeah. Then we get it to our next one. Give us time to find yeah. the right sofa for the next yeah. one. Too. Are there any comments or questions before we call it quits today, Patrick? Oh, I think that's it. I know uh, you guys want to comment on if you like this style. Uh, we would do this every time if we had stuff here well, to work well, on. Yeah. Cool. It is called the Upholstery Show. It's action. <laughs> I felt it was action-packed. I felt Jimmy's a good sidekick. I'm okay. Well, I'm your sidekick. Oh. <laughs> we'll discuss that after. We'll, we'll the discuss show. who the real star yeah, of the show is. He keeps it all the secrets. I might find out that one. <laughs> he might, I might be his sidekick. <laughs> <laughs> Jimmy, Jimmy doesn't need a sidekick. He's his own kick, right? Jimmy? Yeah, I, 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 I do well. I'm the, I'm the uh, Martin and Lewis. <laughs> Thanks, Jimmy. Really yeah. interesting. If we went, if we go to your turf. Then well, you're the expert. Oh me? And then uh, you mean that'll I, be an interesting do like a, a switcheroo. 
I think we go to Jimmy's place of expertise. We could bring that regulator and touch the third <laughs> rail with that regulator. Yeah, yeah, a little, a little closer. No, no, a little, a I little higher. I'm beating the both of us up. I know. This is so frustrating. I know. I know it. Oh God. What's a what's a switch? How do you switch the tracks? How does that work? Oh, well, everything's secured, guys. We have no problem with that. having you two guys out so there. Do they still have those things like press the lever? And they do. Yeah. Right? yeah. Yeah, we do. You don't do that. Do I you? do. You do? Wow, yeah. cool. Yeah. That's cool. That's a that's a responsible job. It is. You see what they're doing with all these tr the rail trails they're making? They keep the, they keep the old artifacts. They get rid of the tracks, but they keep the sweats. And they'll, oh, yeah. I don't know if you noticed that around here. They're taking all the tracks up. Yeah, I mean, but they yeah. keep stuff on the side that they would like the switch. They kept that. They it's kind of nice. What's that? There's a big circle. What's that called? Roundabout. The, yeah, where the thing would go in and it would turn. Yeah, they, they, they turn the train. Yeah. It's, I mean, to me, it's a bit of history. I mean, I, it's cool. I, the, up where my son lives in uh, Peabody, he, we had there's an old abandoned track, and of course, years ago, a lot of the uh, the cars used to go into the factories. Yeah. They would unload, you know, whatever. Product they have. Q and A on this. I'm oh sure. yeah, <laughs> but no, you're trying to teach them a little bit about history and how things kind of worked, especially when things were in the 20s and 30s, when again trains were the big thing. So, yeah. I think people are gonna be asking now for you to do a, a training Q and A. Yeah, we'll find a little. Yeah, <laughs> you see me walking down the track like a, like a hobo. Yeah, we can Maybe do that. Maybe Jimmy could close us out, but before he closes us out, I want to ask Jimmy a question. What has upholstery done? Has upholstery changed oh, your life? Like oh has, has God! It, what has upholstery done Well, I, I'll say this: that I've had a Those lot of. Doesn't against your will, Joe. Yeah, I know. Well, and this you is. You don't a, want to say. No, I, no. I guess do I have to? Do I have to endorse you? Is that? No, is, no. no. <laughs> you know, Jimmy is one of my first students. He he showed up with his. You got to give everybody a. a a headache doing that, though. With yeah, you, you, are you uh, drinking again? <laughs> Put down that iced coffee, yeah, man. It's way too much. How <laughs> 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 you drink? Uh, we've we officially gone off the rails. Yeah, uh, no <clears> you, as enough. usual, yeah. you you know. The, the <clears throat> I know, we're just having a little fun because we're under a lot of pressure, Jimmy. It's the holidays, and people want their you things know, well, now. Well, drink, drink, that's why the drinking starts between Thanksgiving. We don't promote drinking here, only, <clears throat> only coffee. I just had my <clears throat> coffee. It's a sober so. workplace. But oh, Jimmy, it is? Jimmy yeah. was I'm, the I'm, I'm out of here then. <laughs> <laughs> Jimmy was one of the first upholsters, uh, apprentices to take my class in Arlington, Massachusetts. He walked in, he had his uniform on, and all the women there loved Jimmy because they, they, they weren't used to... You know, rubbing elbows with uniform people. They were, they were. It was a concierge shop. In walks Jimmy with his. He had three bags of tools, power tools, and everything else. And uh, the camo and, bag, right? And, and, yeah, the, the and, camo and, bag. And he, he <coughs> came in and took the the class by storm. So we we appreciate Jimmy. For but I've had fun with longevity. it. It's been, it's been a learning experience every time. It's a different projects. We've all talked about that. I've done a few projects for a few friends and. It's, uh, I mean, it continues to be that way. I mean, really, we do the YouTube channel for people like Jimmy. Yeah. For people out there who don't have the benefit of coming into a shop. Right. And, and that, that's, why I, he's pretty much a good inspiration for us <coughs> to keep moving on this. So we hope that he, he, he doesn't ever go anywhere. And stays with us for as long as you know. Well, well, I'll take the show. I'll take you guys with me. Is what I'll do. That's All right. right. Well, if I move out of town, <laughs> you know, that's what we'll have to You'll do. You'll be here next week. Oh yeah, I'll be Sounds here next good. week. And, yeah. And don't forget Broadway Upholstery School on YouTube and Facebook, right, Patrick? Yep. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. Have a good weekend. <laughs>